Last night, a rocket explosion rocked the Wallops Island launch facility in Virginia. The explosion has been all over the news, but what was really lost and what happened exactly? <laughs> Hey there everyone, Amy and Trace here for DNews. Last night we were supposed to see another resupply mission launch to the International Space Station. But instead, Orbital Science's Antares rocket exploded shortly after launching from Wallops Island at 6.22 p.m. Eastern Time. The mission was Orbital Science's third official cargo mission to the station, part of a $1.9 billion contract with NASA to fly eight resupply missions. In this case, the $200 million spacecraft was stocked with 5,000 pounds of food, water, experiments, and gear to be sent to astronauts currently living aboard the station. According to NASA, the ISS has enough food and water to stretch until March, but it's still a pretty major loss. But luckily no one was injured, but we also don't know what went wrong just yet. Things looked great during countdown and through liftoff. The Antares rocket cleared the tower, then things took a turn. It looked, at least on NASA TV, like something near the base of the rocket exploded, destroying its thrust. The rocket fell back down to the pad, sparking a second, much larger explosion that ended with what was left of the rocket and the launch pad being entirely engulfed in flames. As the incident unfolded, the Orb 3 launch commentator was speechless. For the moment, we don't know how bad the damage was to the pad, and we won't know until Orbital and NASA carry out their detailed investigation. All this happened in the first 20 seconds of flight, before that bright orange fireball that you keep seeing on the news. Once the failure began, the safety officials triggered a launch abort. Orbital recorded telemetry as long as it could, but it it started gathering what data it had for the post-mortem analysis. All their data will be used in the accident investigation, which should have begun today at daybreak on the East Coast with debris collection. In anticipation, the site around the launch pad was secured pretty quickly last night. There was classified cryptographic equipment on the Cygnus spacecraft that needed to be maintained, and there were, quote, hazardous materials on board, including solid rocket fuel, hydrazine, and other chemicals which may have contaminated the area. The damage was mainly contained to the Wallops Island facility, though it's pretty hard to tell at night, and things pretty much come to a standstill around a launch pad during any explosion. This isn't the first time Orbital has lost a mission to a catastrophic launch vehicle failure. In 2001, the total ozone mapping spectrometer failed to reach orbit. In 2009, a Minotaur C rocket failed with the orbiting carbon observatory on board. And most recently, in 2011, one of Orbital's Taurus XL launch vehicles failed to deliver NASA's Glory spacecraft because the nose cone failed to separate. Space exploration and science is no easy task. There's a reason that only well-developed countries usually do it and very few private companies become successful at it. A tiny screw-up can have a devastating effect, as you can all see. I think the biggest thing to take away from this incident is that there's always a silver lining to a failure. Even though we've been launching spacecraft and resupply flights to the ISS for years, it's still rocket science and things can still go wrong. What's really important is that Orbital and NASA go through all the available data, telemetry, and review all the videos and imagery to pinpoint the problem so it doesn't happen again. There's some early speculation that the problem problem might be rooted in the AJ-26 engine, a Russian design that experienced a failure during a hot fire test this past May, but we won't really know what took down Antares for a while yet. Right, and although this is huge news because fireballs look good on TV, I feel for the engineers and the scientists who built and created this rocket. Not to mention the scientists and students who filled it with experiments and all these other cargo pieces. Roughly a third of the rocket's cargo was just scientific investigations, including dozens of modular CubeSats and science experiments to explore how microgravity affects blood flow in the brain, how plants are affected by the environment of space, and several experiments designed by students for the Student Space Flight Experiments program. Nothing that was on that rocket was irreplaceable, but it's still pretty sad. Thanks for watching D News, everybody. If you guys want to be rock stars, you can add information to the comments as it comes in. We can all learn about this incident together then. Head down into the comments to do that. You can also subscribe to D News while you're down below this video. And make sure you come find us on Twitter if you want further updates. I'm at Trace Dominguez, and Amy is at AST Vintage Space.